Hello, and I'd like to welcome everyone that has joined us for our Cataract webinar today. My name is Carolyn Yakish, and I'm the Premium Experience Manager at Thomas I Group. And I have the um, great fortune to spend some time with Dr. Nanita Brown. She is in our Midtown office today. Welcome, Dr. Brown. You've got some beautiful sunshine behind you. I know, this morning it was a monsoon, and now it's just perfect. Yeah, like crazy. Like I can't even get over it. Did you drive in rain this morning? I did. I was soaked because I walked outside just a little bit and it was just pouring in all different directions. Like <laughs> you're probably like, am I going to work today or am I calling in? You know, because I know the offices were a little concerned with patients not being able to safely, you know, come. Did most of the patients show up today? Yeah, most people came in today, maybe a little delayed, but we got yeah. everybody seen. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I couldn't get over when I when I woke up and looked outside and I'm like, Ugh. and um, I, I ran to the office really quick and I, I'm like, it's blinding out here now because it's so bright, but I'm so happy about that. So I didn't know the day would end up this pretty. So I hope each of you on this um, got through a crazy morning and either you're at home or at your office, who knows, but Welcome again. And one thing that we noticed when COVID started, and we were very concerned on how to communicate with our patients and, you know, staying in touch with you guys. And um, our management team came up with this great concept of doing webinars on all different specialties that we do. And it has just been tremendously successful to spend some time educating you as well as answering some questions. So I wanted to let each of you know that below there is a chat box, feel free to ask questions. And I tend to ask Dr. Brown those towards the end of the webinar because a lot of this she will answer as we're going through this, but feel free to throw some questions in. I will keep an eye on it and ask her each and every one of them. So Dr. Brown, I'm gonna start with the only, you'll know this, the answer to this and I'm, I'm excited to hear it. Why did you choose ophthalmology? What made you go into this field and then in the specialty that you have gone into? Well, originally I was going to be a pediatric cardiologist of all yeah. things. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. That's great to know. <laughs> so I was doing um, my graduate research PhD work in imaging of the heart. And I was able to do a postdoc where we started imaging the eye. And I just, you know, I couldn't go back to the heart. <laughs> I just really enjoyed being able to actually see what you're diagnosing. Because a lot of medicine, you're using a stethoscope, you're, you know, doing a scan or something like that. But in ophthalmology, we can literally see in the back of the eye and see what's going on and the damage that's being um, from different diseases. So I did some research um, in imaging of the eye, OCT, optical coherence tomography. And then um, I was able to go to India on a program called Unite for Sight. And I gave out glasses and watch surgery and that's where I found the passion because um, I was like there's not a lot of things in medicine where you can have such a huge impact by doing a seven minute surgery seven minute cataract surgery um, I chose to do a fellowship in glaucoma because I take care of black folks um, glaucoma is more likely to be in black people and Black people are more likely to go blind from glaucoma. So that's how I ended up being a glaucoma specialist. That's fantastic. You must have the greatest stories of going to India, like what, like what you got to see and experience and the gratefulness of those people. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you have someone who is blind from cataract, you're taking out not only that person, but whoever is caring for them. So you're losing two people from the community. Mm -hmm. And so we see patients who are being led by their family members mm -hmm. to have these surgeries done. And then when they leave, it's like, I mean, you can watch the videos online, the Himalayan Eye Project, people are screaming, clapping, rejoicing oh. because it's freedom. Yeah. You, know, you can start working, cooking, cleaning, 
doing all the things that you weren't able to. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to talk to you more about that. I just, <laughs> this is like, okay, to each of you watch it. I don't know this stuff, you know, so this is like super cool. We need to go to lunch, okay? <laughs> um, so I thought you could also touch on, um, you know, obviously we've been actively living in a COVID environment for a year now. And it's interesting, it was about a year this time last year that we sort of closed our offices and kept uh, two offices, one being yours and Noonan, open for a mostly emergency um, patients. And I think we've all got used to certain things and um, we're feeling maybe a little bit more comfortable. And through this time, um, seeing patients and keeping them healthy and keeping our staff health, healthy as well as obviously our doctors healthy. Could you, for those that, that are on the call today that have not come into our office to see us yet, could you just sort of talk into what we are doing to keep um, patients safe? Well, the first thing is that everyone has a mask on. So the patients, the staff, myself, we all have masks. Um, and when you come into our clinic, everyone is checked. Um, we have a temperature screening and we also ask questions just to make sure that the patients that are high risk are um, directed correctly. Um, we also do over the phone screenings for all the patients before their appointments. And then once you come into the office, we separate patients and we try to bring the patients directly into the room so that you're not having as much exposure. All of our equipment has a plexiglass screen so that you're separated from um, the technician. Um, and also on your way out, Everything is clean. Um, anything that you've touched has been um, sanitized. And we ask for your feedback. We have um, little icons that you can scan on your phone. And so real time, we're able to help and, and upgrade the different things that we need to do to make sure that everybody feels safe. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I think behind the curtain, if I could say this in a really uh, truthful way, our offices have never been so clean. <laughs> like ever, like ever. I know I did it for two months. I was out there cleaning everything and it was actually sort of fun, but I was like, my goodness, this, like you could eat off our chairs and you know, all this stuff and the monitors and all that. So I, you know, we're cleaner than Whole Foods and Publix and all this kind of stuff. So it is, it's a nice feeling. Um, so yeah, thank you for answering that as well as um, let us know what offices you work out of as well as what surgery centers. So I am in Noonan, Georgia, which is about a half an hour south of the airport. I'm there every day except Thursdays. And I do surgery at Piedmont Noonan, which is about two exits down from our office. Um, on Thursdays, I'm here in Midtown, like today. Um, and I do surgery up in Sandy Springs at our ASC. Yep, okay, wonderful. Yes, she's sitting in our, let's see, that was, we have one new office since that one, and Midtown's one of our newest offices, and it's one of our most beautiful offices. I'm always like, oh, I just love that office. It's so pretty, and the people are so nice. So let's get into it. Um, I thought the first question, and I'm going to ask you questions that my team, so what my team does is uh, they receive all of the cataract questions, all the consulting over the phone, um, it, some of the insurance stuff um scheduling consults with all of our cataract surgeons so i was going to go through and ask you the most commonly asked question that you know we are getting when um, patients call in and the first one is what is a cataract and what are the symptoms so a cataract is when the lens that's in your eye which focuses the light in your eye when it starts to get cloudy so instead of being clear, like when you're born, it starts to get a little bit brown, white. And so you can't see as well as you usually can. Um, most common symptoms that I hear is people having difficulty driving at night or difficulty seeing the words at the bottom of the screen when you're watching TV. And a lot of people have difficulty reading, especially if they don't have a lot of light. Um, so those are, those are the three main complaints that I hear when people have cataract issues. 
so it was so funny. My dad turned 84 last week and oh, his, yeah, he's like a hoot. Like he's totally super cool, <laughs> and active, and crazy cool. And he is always telling us girls, like, I don't like driving at night. So I was in yeah. Sandy Springs yesterday. And one of the girls had asked me about it. I said, oh yeah, my dad, I can't believe he doesn't need cataract surgery yet. And she asked me that one question, mm-hmm. does he drive at night? And he, I'm like, no, he doesn't. And he, she says to me, I'm sure he needs cataract surgery. Yeah. You know, definitely. definitely. You know, I mean, I think people start limiting themselves. Yeah. Um, so they will only drive a certain route or yeah. they will limit themselves to a certain area um, because they start not being able to see the street signs. Yeah. And especially if you're on the highway at night, it can be very frustrating with yeah. the lights shining in your eyes. Yep, absolutely. So again, it's interesting about a year ago, we were talking to some patients in the office that were more 65-ish and asking them if they knew what cataracts were. And I was actually surprised how many people didn't know. And also they thought it was a bad thing. Like they did something bad and that's why they have cataracts. And it was interesting to, to hear. I'm like, no, it's it has nothing to do with, you did something bad to your eyes. And I'm sure there's things that have happened, but like what causes cataracts? Like if, if someone's sitting in your chair and asks you that, how do you answer? Um, I would say aging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's the cause of cataract because there are parts of the lens that over time just kind of age. And instead of being insoluble, they become soluble. So they kind of settle. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason that you develop cataract. Um, sometimes increased sun exposure can increase the rates of cataract, but for the most part, it's just a natural process of aging. Yeah. Do most patients, are they told they have cataracts from an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, or are you finding that people are like, yeah, I think I have cataracts now that come in? Um, I'd say it's probably about 50, 50 split. So some people are in denial. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. Without aging at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think there's just a 50 50 split. Like some people are very particular about their eyes. And so they have a, a you know a lower threshold for when they come to see us. So some people come prematurely versus other people, you know, they could be practically legally blind before they realize that they're suffering from this. Yeah. Well, one thing um, that my team always goes over when the patients are calling through and they're walking through what sort of like their appointment's going to be, they're, they're very forthright in explaining. You could be there two to three hours. There's a lot of testing. Like there really is that, you know, for us that understand this industry, it's, it's just amazing what we can find out about the eye and with all the equipment we have in the office. So could you walk us through like what type of testing is done when they come in? Well, the first thing you're going to have is just a basic eye exam. So we're going to check your vision. We're going to check your eye pressure. We're going to make sure that you don't have any abnormalities to the surface of your eye, whether it be dryness or just any chronic allergies. So we kind of start from the front and work our way back. Mm -hmm. Um, After that, we'll start checking to see if you're experiencing this glare, right? So We'll ask you a lot of questions about your lifestyle and your goals and um, kind of take a little bit of a history. Um, then you will be dilated. So prepare for that. <laughs> People <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so we'll dilate you and we'll take a look in the back of your eye to make sure that there's no abnormalities that could be causing the changes in your vision outside of cataracts. Um, you then get a chance to talk to the doctor about all the different options in cataract surgery. And then um, you'll get to be able to talk to our surgery scheduler and get more of the specifics and um, kind of discuss what your goals are and how we can help. Yeah. Would you say in the days we're living, meaning people are so on the computer looking and researching, that patients come to you knowing a little bit about lenses or if their uh, friends had gotten a particular lens, or are you finding we are doing a little bit more education to explain one, what they are um, 
what they what they what they can get in their eye. Uh, um, like, do we spend quite a bit of time on lens choices? I guess. Yeah, we definitely spend a lot of time kind of talking patients through the different types of surgeries that we do, because I I would hate for someone to have a regret. Yeah. You know? So I always start with the same conversation. Um, and I have the same conversation, no matter what kind of story somebody tells, because a lot of times, you know, some people will say, well, I got laser or I've, I've had laser before. And in ophthalmology, there are 15 different kinds of lasers. Yes. So who knows if they got laser with cataract surgery or laser with retina or glaucoma. So it's always based basically the same conversation just so that we're we all are on the same playing field yeah okay now do you get asked if uh cataract will come back definitely okay. <laughs> i hear that a lot <laughs> yes so the cataract that comes back is really in about one in five people um when we put that lens into your eye there is a bag that it sits in and that bag can get scar tissue. And so that's what makes it seem like you're getting another cataract because you have that scar tissue behind the lens. Mm -hmm. But the best part of that is that it's very easy to fix. We can do an in-office laser actually to clear up that scar tissue behind the lens. Mm -hmm. And that's a very- Not painful either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see people come in for them and they're, you know, fine. I think the best analogy I've ever heard is the M&M one where a cataract is like the chocolate of the M&M. Is that mm -hmm. right? And yeah. then the shell is the outer. And so we take the chocolate out and we put the lens in. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I love chocolate. So it's an easy one. Um, <laughs> um, are, are both eyes done at the same time in surgery? Usually they're not. They're done about a week or two apart. Um, just to decrease the risk of infection. Um, I have done cataract surgery in both eyes before, but that was in patients that were very high risk and that we had to do general anesthesia on. So um, in some places they are doing both eyes, but I, I don't do that routinely just because of the risk of infection. Yeah, and you hit on something I was gonna ask, what is the risk of, of cataract surgery? So I always tell my patients there's three big risks. Um, the first risk is bleeding. So you may have redness around your eyes. Um, the second risk is infection. So we give you antibiotics to try and make sure you don't get an infection. Mm -hmm. And the third risk is blindness. So you could lose your vision or have decreased vision from the surgery. All of those are major risks to the procedure. Yeah. Because I think since we do this every day, you know, all day, um, it, it, I don't want to say it's, it, it's not scary because, you know, you're not having it and we see such success and it, it just is, oh, it's cataract surgery. It's easy. It's wonderful. It's like a teeth cleaning, but you know, it isn't. Um, and, but when it's a real patient coming through and they've got all this emotion and it's, and it's eye surgery, you know, and then often patients like, are you putting me under anesthesia? How do you explain to your patients what it's like in the OR? So usually I tell them it's kind of like when you go for a colonoscopy. <laughs> oh, that's good. I don't know which I'd rather have. <laughs> so we give you the same type of medication. We're not going to put a tube down your throat, um, but you will be lightly sedated. Uh, we need to be able to uh, give you instructions if we need to change anything. So most times um, your people will fall asleep, but we don't want you to fall asleep because when you're sleeping, you move, you know, every breath you're moving. And then some people, um, they have like restless leg or different things and they'll like actually pop up. <laughs> oh, so wow. we, we want you to be a little bit with us. And if anything is happening or you need to sneeze or you know, something happens, you can talk to us. So you can hear us. You can hear music in the back. Um, so it's, it's not a very stressful environment, I would say. I think, you know, you see things on TV where people are in like the operating room and it's yeah. stressful, yeah. but 
ophthalmology, um, no, it's not a stressful operating yeah. room. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the nurses up there are so nice in, in both locations because I've been to your Piedmont location and they really make it just, I think, quite, you know, comfortable. And, you know, we all have, you know, our nerves for this kind of stuff, but it's such a lovely environment and they've worked there for a long time and they understand every emotion, um, even through right now having COVID, you know, it's less people in the waiting room and more people in their cars and everything's just done slower, I would say, because of the cleaning. It takes a little bit longer, but it's a really nice experience. I always hear a lot of compliments from the ASC. So another thing that I think you go over um, is, uh, can you explain the femto laser? Yeah. So I, I tell patients that more or less there are three different types of cataract surgery. Um, the first one is your standard procedure where we take the lens out of your eye, we put an implant in, and it helps you get the distance vision, but you end up needing to wear reading glasses. Um, the second type of surgery is the femto laser, laser cataract surgery. And in this surgery, the laser actually makes all of the incisions and helps us with the surgery. It can also help to treat astigmatism, but after the surgery, most people are still gonna need glasses for that near vision. Um, the third type of surgery is called the specialty lens. So instead of the standard lens, you have a lens now placed in your eye that allows you to see distance and near. So you have a more dynamic range of vision and you're not as dependent on the reading glasses. Mm -hmm. So the femtosecond laser is just helping us to do the surgery, to do the standard surgery. And sometimes it can be used to correct for astigmatism. Okay. In your office, well, in both Noonan and in Midtown, do you guys show the femto video? I don't think so. I think you can accept, accept like a look at it online. So I think okay. if you go into your patient portal, you can look okay. at the different videos. Okay, okay, wonderful. I know every, every office does things just a little bit different. Yeah. We have too many offices now to keep up with it all. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> We're so modern. <laughs> I know, like seriously, three more since I've been here. Um, uh, what is it like after, okay, first, does the patient feel anything during surgery? So they'll feel water around their eye. They may feel a little bit of pressure. Okay. Um, and then when we're putting in the numbing medication, sometimes it does burn a little bit. So just like when you're coming in the clinic to get your eye pressure checked, yeah. you know, some people will get a little bit of sensitivity when we're, when we're putting in that numbing medication, but okay. it should not be painful. Okay. And so when I see those lovely nurses downstairs in Sandy Springs, wheel the patient to the car, the patient's always laughing and like, ha, 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 and they're all like in a good mood and sweet and wonderful. Yeah. When the patient gets home and like sits on the couch or lays down, is it tingly? What is the patient experiencing that day? Usually people feel a little bit of dryness. So a little scratchiness. And that's just because we've had your eye open for a little bit of time. You weren't able to really blink. And on top of that, we've been shining light onto your eye during the cataract surgery. So that can dry things out. But we give you a lot of different drops to use, including artificial tears to kind of keep that surface feeling better. Yeah. I had LASIK surgery and I felt like that was the worst part of the whole thing was the night. I, I agree. I had LASIK too. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's so funny. It's so easy, but you got to be done with it to go, oh, LASIK is easy. But when you're laying there, you're like, what am I doing? Exactly. You no. Know? And then after you're like, I don't need glasses. This is awesome. You know, woke up the next day and I was like, I can see the clock. I mean, I Holy. think that's another reason that I went into ophthalmology is because I was I wore glasses since I was like two or three years old. Like that was just my second skin. And so when I got um, into medical school, they had a discount. <laughs> for medical yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> LASIK and I, I just, I like, you know, everybody's like, oh, glasses are in style, Dr. Brown, you should get wow. some drinks. I'm like, no. I know. Mm -mm. I know when you're done with them and contacts <laughs> and you have great peripheral vision, you're like LASIK rock. So yeah, that's another webinar. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> what is, when can patients go back to sort of normal life or like you probably have sportsy people, golf people, tennis people, and then you've got more like, like chilling people that you do, like, how do you let them know what to do and what not to do? Well, definitely the day of surgery and the day after surgery, you can't drive because you're get, you've gotten the anesthesia. And so those days are really critical for you to kind of put aside all of your normal daily activities and just rest yeah. and use the medication. Um, but usually after that, when we look to make sure that the incisions are healing okay, we can have patients um, more or less function normally. They can't get any water in their eye. I always tell them to keep their head above their heart, so no bending over, usually for about the first week. Um, and then after that, you can go back to okay. normal functioning. So I'm sort of embarrassed to ask you this, and I don't think I've asked any cataract surgeon yet this. Okay. Uh, is it old school? Because I remember from the LASIK days, but is it old school cataracts where we would send patients home with like clear, like we're, we have them tape the clear lens on their eye so they wouldn't touch it? it do yeah. we still do that? Or is that like? We still do that. Yeah, we, we still do. wear the shield okay. on there. Yeah, so you still wear the shield um, at least until you see the doctor. So okay. I see my patients the same day. So like they'll have surgery in the morning and then I see them four to six hours later in the afternoon. Okay. And so I want, I don't want them touching their eye before I can look at it to see if the incisions are, are healing. Okay. So some people will make people wear the shield overnight because they'll see the patient the next day. Okay. Okay. So you, that they leave with that on, is that correct? Yes. Okay. We put it on in the operating room. So we give them a dose of their drops and then we put the shield on okay. and then they leave. And then whenever they need to use drops, they just take the shield off and they put more drops in. So okay. we send them with, you know, tape and all the things that they need in their, in their little bag. Okay. okay. Awesome. I need to come watch you do cataract surgery. Would you, you let me? Should. You should. You should. I'll be quiet. It's hard for me to be quiet, but I'll, I promise I'll try to be. You could put something to tape over my mouth. Okay. Yeah. Um, next question. This is always a very popular one. Um, do, will I need, even though you touched on it a little bit in the beginning, but will I need to wear glasses after surgery? So most people don't end up needing glasses for their distance vision. But if you have an astigmatism or if we um, kind of aim for intermediate vision or near vision, sometimes you will have to wear glasses to be able to see in the distance. Okay. Most people end up needing reading glasses of some sort. Okay. Yeah. It was interesting. The other day I was in Sandy Springs and there was a 99-year-old uh, patient that wow. had a multifocal lens 10 years ago. And she did a testimony for us and oh, wow. she's still driving. Mm -hmm. She's doing all the stuff. Like she mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah. And she's mm -hmm. like, honey, I even wish I would have done it earlier. And yeah. I'm like, it, it was just, it, you know, I love running into these patients in the mm -hmm. office. Like, you mm -hmm. know, often the cataract surgeons, because of what I do here, when I'm running through office, there's like, Carolyn, come in the room, listen to the patient, listen to him, listen to him. And the patient's always like, you know, it's one day, one week post-op. And they're just like going nuts of how great this has been. Yeah. And, you know, I love seeing it on that side yeah. because the, the comments are, again, they, 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 I, I'd love to do what you do because you get to hear such good stuff too. Definitely. You know? So I, I, um, I had a patient here in Midtown. I did her surgery last week and um, Dr. Yang, who is the optometrist here, and Dr. Arnhardt, they're both optometrists here in the Midtown office. And Dr. Arnhardt called me. She said, your patient is crying. She's so excited. <laughs> oh, oh. People, you know, they don't even realize how much better their vision can be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It's awesome. I, I used to tease my mom terribly. She would yell at my father had a great relationship but she would yell at my dad and I was raised in Orlando Florida so it's bright all the time because you right. know the ocean and everything and she would yell at my father put the lights on put the lights on and every light in the house was on so she goes and has cataract surgery she realizes how bright it was in the house and she's like oh and I'm so sorry like I didn't know it was this bright you know and it's I think when you get used to it 
Yeah. yeah. And it's such a slow disease, you know, it's not like you end up with a cataract overnight. It's like you're slowly losing your vision. Yeah. Okay. So that's another question I have. Mm -hmm. People in the office, you like I'll overhear them or with a doctor and they have a cataract and, you know, I don't know if your stage is a cataract, but does it matter? Let's say you diagnose me with a cataract today. Mm -hmm. Does it matter if I have surgery next month or in five years? Well, the lens will slowly get more and more brown and harder and harder to remove. So it is a much simpler surgery, much faster recovery if you do it sooner than later, mm -hmm. um, because we have to use more energy to get that lens out of your eye. Yeah. Do you sometimes get people just go, I'm ready now. I, I want to yes. get this. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You know, and we don't, Definitely. yeah. And we don't sell cataract surgery, but it is interesting <laughs> when people make the decision. Um, and, or they're like, they'll ask the doctor, cause I've been in many of the exam rooms where they'll, they'll say to the doctor, well, could I have it now? And the doctor's like, well, yeah, that's up to you. You yeah. know, sure. Yeah. You know, Definitely. I mean, people, people are like, are you going to do it today? And I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a little more to it. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, that's very for sure. Um, we hit that. Um, let me, oh, I just opened the chat room and there's just a couple questions and I'm sorry to the first gentleman to ask how long the webinar is. It's, it's a, about 45 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm just seeing that. And then the second question that we have to you is what is the device that is placed in the eye when, uh, when cataract is being done for those who are taking Lumigan for the prevention of glaucoma? this device is supposed to reduce eye pressure instead of Lumigan drops nightly? You have asked the best question to the perfect person because oh, I'm totally. a specialist. Yep. <laughs> Did perfect. you get that one? Did you no, that? it's a real person. <laughs> <laughs> so what he's talking about are MIGS procedures. So minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. And there are about 20 to 30 different procedures that we have where during cataract surgery, we can lower the eye pressure by putting in a stent. We have an eye stent. We also have a hook where we take out the drain, remove the drainage system. We also can dilate the drain. So there's a lot of different devices um, that we can put into the drainage system of your eye to try and get you off the latanoprost. And would that be done at the same time? Yes. So at the end of the cataract surgery, we put a lens on the surface of the eye so that we can see the drain. And then we go in and depending on what, um, how much pressure reduction we think that you need, we'll do a different surgery. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. Because um, I've seen that little device that's put in. It's amazing. It's so small. I just can't get over what you guys do. It's just awesome. Um, another question, which I think is just so typical that, that we get, and it's a very fair question. And that is, how do you answer the question about the cost of the surgeries? Like the lenses, um, uh, on how you talk with patients after you see them. So usually the first procedure, the standard procedure is covered by most insurances. Um, the femtosecond or laser cataract surgery is usually a charge somewhere between 1500 per eye. And then to get the specialty lens, it's usually between two and $3,000 per eye. Now I say this also in the context that I really don't think that the choices that people make are based on the financial considerations. Um, my parents are probably on this call. <laughs> and my father got the standard procedure because he had worn glasses his whole life. So the fascination with getting out of glasses, that was not something that at all interests him. You know, he's a professor. He had no interest in getting out of glasses. That was kind of part of his personality was wearing glasses. <laughs> versus my mother had never worn glasses. So the idea of carrying around readers all the time and being dependent on glasses, she made that choice. So I think it has more to do with your personality yeah. and your expectations yeah. than the finances, because we can figure out how to finance these lenses. Like we have all kinds of 
ways that we yeah. can help. Yeah, exactly. Well, it is sort of an interesting time. I, I don't really understand this stimulus check stuff, but <laughs> you know, I, someone told me I was going to get one. I'm like, okay. Um, and I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, what a great time to put a stimulus check toward our health, like something that each of us, for those of us that are looking for something, it just makes it a little bit easier, you know, um, with that. And so that's just another consideration when it comes to the cost. And I did want to let you know, um, if you want to call into our department, um, we have very medical um, consulting, brilliant women in this department that can answer some of these. They can send you um, a packet of our information or email it to you. But first, first thing we need to know is if they're a candidate for certain lens choices, you know, just because there's those options, they have to be a candidate and that, that work out for them. And, you know, you hit something on the head because I, I have talked to a patient that has told me, I wish I would have gotten a different lens. And it was interesting, you know, and I think this question has come up a couple of times because I heard a person years ago in our office say, I'm just going to get the Medicare lens, but in like two years, I'm going to have that taken out and put the multifocal lens in and exactly like that, you can't do that. Yeah, it's a very um, just rigorous surgery to remove the lens and the complications go up with that surgery. So it's best to choose kind of upfront um, yeah. what you would like. Yeah, absolutely. Here's another great question because I think about this for you and I, but you're a lot younger than I am. Um, and that is how does LASIK surgery affect cataract surgery? So with LASIK surgery, we've done laser to the cornea. And so some people will have dryness um, chronically. Some people will have astigmatism. Different things can be kind of found after you've had LASIK surgery. And so for those patients, we definitely do not use the um, specialty lenses because we just don't know how the cornea is going to react to the surgery. Um, I wouldn't say it's a more complicated surgery. I would just say that we usually just do the standard lens to make sure that they will be happy with that distance vision correction. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Because there's a lot of people that are going to be you know, in that category, especially, you know, as we go forward and, and uh, yeah, so having LASIK, you know, you know how that is too. Yeah. Um, so I, it looks like we've answered all the questions today. I did want to let everyone know that each of our webinars go on the, our website under webinars and you can watch them, you can share them. Um, it's been wonderful to, to put people or direct people to our website. And also, if you do want to call and talk to, it's called the Premium Experience Department or the Cataract Department. Um, when you call our main number, which is on the website, it's 678-892-2020. Just hit number four, and you'll talk to my department of just brilliant people. I love them so much. They're, they make um, this whole cataract experience just a nice journey, as well as um, Dr. Brown's surgery schedule or Jennifer. Um, and I know you've got a new one, and I'm sorry I haven't officially met her um right do you or is that it's not you <laughs> oh that was a good one it's another i can't keep track with all of our surgery schedulers you're like did you take someone away from me so sorry on that one whoops um but i know there's a new one to me but uh but i just want to thank each of you for being on this and mom of dad of dr brown you guys you guys have I, have, I, have daughter. You. I have a gift for you too, Carolyn. My, um, my mother, she makes pottery. So I had, you were supposed to come into the office. So I, I had a, a beautiful piece of pottery and my father oh, just wrote a book. Serious? So I had a copy of his book for you. So you have to oh. stop by and we, oh, I, <laughs> we'll oh, have my, I feel terrible. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Thank, well, I'm going to tell the other doctors, they need to start giving me gifts for these. I like that. Thanks for starting this. Yeah, I like it. Oh my God. Well, thank you. And oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Uh, I can't wait to see you. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me just make sure there's not one more question. I think, wait, let me just go down one more. Okay, I think, oh wait, here it is. Wait, sorry. Uh, what is the process for someone who is a longtime patient of Thomas Eye Clinic? My doc has been watching my cataract for many years. 
So if you've been watched um, for a couple of years, it never hurts to get a second opinion if, if, if you're you know worried about your vision. But if you feel that you're seeing okay and you don't feel that there's been any change to your activities, it's perfectly fine to watch the cataract. Um, usually people will come in saying, Dr. Brown, like we need to go to surgery. It's time yeah. to get this out. Yeah. Um, it's very rare that I look in someone's eyes and I tell them that they have a cataract and they respond, are you kidding me? You know, most of the time people are very much aware that something is not right. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's never really a surprise. I mean, I think people are surprised when I tell them that they have glaucoma or other diseases that um, subtly appear. And with cataract surgery and cataract, most patients are having difficulty with the things that they normally do. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So Dr. Brown, do you have some departing words of wisdom for us on the, is it to the 18th of March? <laughs> Give us some, some words of wisdom on anything you'd like to like to talk about. Well, I, I think that the things that this year has really taught me is we just have to look around and think of all the things that we're gracious for. Um, our staff, our families, good health, great weather, yeah. you know, Everyone, uh, yeah. knows, you just have to take a moment and um, meditate, breathe, and just think about how lucky we are to have made yeah. it through all of this. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's been quite a crazy year. Um, so really I'm very is. thankful to my parents and thankful to, to everyone that I work with and like all of the team that just keeps showing up because it's very stressful to yeah. worry about getting exposed to COVID and worrying about your families and kids in school and all these different things yeah. that, that have really challenged people. Um, yeah. so I feel really blessed and honored um, to be able to, to show up every day and you know use my talent to help people. But my, my public service announcement would be, everybody go get an eye exam. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. I love it. That that is that's perfect. I absolutely people just sometimes I, I tell you, even coming from LASIK, I from a background of LASIK, people would often say, Oh, I don't need to get an eye exam again. I'm like, oh no, no, no. Oh, that's no LASIK has nothing to do with not getting an eye exam again. Like you need to do that. There is so much information in the eye, sort of like when you started this um, webinar today and you get to see all the way through. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Brown. Like I, I tell you, I've just had the best time talking with you today. And I can just say from all of our staff to you as one of our doctors, thank you because you made this last year so much better for us. And you, you, you kept us all employed and we didn't miss a beat. And many of our hearts are very connected to you guys that made sure of that because it's because of you guys and, and our patients. And it's just as crazy as the year has been, there's just so much to still be grateful for. So I'd like to also say thank you to you. Well, thank you. All it's right. been fun. It's been fun, all these Zoom calls. We get to see like- <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We'll do another one on something, okay? <laughs> so thanks to each of you for joining us and uh, we appreciate your time and uh, we look forward to seeing you or hearing from you soon. And goodbye, Dr. Brown. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>